We are live. Okay. Good. If you're watching this already, excuse me. I have not done this for a year. So, there's, where's the thing that says how many people are on here? There's one okay. person. Okay, <laughs> guys. Hey, we'll, uh, we'll wait a couple minutes here. Uh, we're going to get started here. Let a couple more people get on. This was kind of last minute because we've had some pop-up showers and stuff. So, I didn't know if I was going to get to do this tonight or not. But, uh, anyhow can't my daughter is going to help me this is my daughter i'm farmhand mike as you know my daughter alexandra she's done live streams with me before and um i'm going to be running the tractor and, and later the combine we're going to switch things around here and uh, i gotta have my glasses on i can't drive the tractor and read the comments so we'll get some stuff going here and uh we'll be with you when a few more people get on so uh we just shut the combine down for whoa it's gimbal here we just shut the combine down we had to add some def fluid to it and uh okay so to start out i have a new versatile 315 tractor here and uh we got this tractor from wms ohio up in upper sandusky ohio and we have a new jnm grain cart here with the right hand unload has the unloading auger on the right hand side so that's something new for jnm so i've been running it here a few days and that's pretty exciting uh what that does is that allows the operator to dump into the truck and your auger is on the same side as all your controls on the tractor. And we're gonna show you that here later. So that's pretty nice. Uh, one of the down things would be, uh, I've heard people say, you have to fold your auger in every time or you'll hit the combine auger when you're unloading on the go. Well, you're supposed to fold your auger in all the time anyway. So that's not really a big deal because we do that. And uh, so I'll be running the 315 here and um, the j and grain cart. We also have, uh, uh, a John Deere 8R340 tractor hooked to our black J&M grain cart. And uh, Jordan from Kenfeld Equipment is here. He's going to be running that tonight. And later on in the video, Alexander is going to jump over in that tractor with him. So if you have any questions on that, uh, I got to run that tractor a little bit. And, you know, I, I love running farm equipment. And um, it's, it's a nice tractor, too. And then I'm going to do a couple loads with this. And then I'm going to jump into combine. We're going to switch around. So you're going to get to see a little bit of everything tonight. Going to go about an hour, hour and a half here or so. Yields have been excellent here in Dark County. Uh, we had a pretty good growing season. Uh, planting went good. A lot of this corn was planted. This field here too got snowed on when the corn was out of the ground. Frosted a couple times. Uh, we had good rain, maybe too much rain in June and July. And August was a little dry, and then harvest kind of got here, and we took some fields off early, and then it was, everything was kind of at a standstill. So we've been getting a lot of rain, but I know Indiana's been getting a lot of rain lately here, and it's all dissipating when it gets here. So last night, we just finished soybeans last night, and, um, and it just showered a little bit right when we got done. So that was perfect, and we got a lot of corn to do. We'll probably be doing corn for a few more weeks yet, but I want to do this live stream here while the weather was good and before the days get shorter. So anyways, um, I'm going to hand the, the camera over to Alexandria. We're going to jump up in the tractor and you guys can ask questions and I will do my best to answer them. And I hear the combine over there running. So I think they're getting ready to get started here and uh, we should be good to go. Yep. <laughs> do you want to, we can spin that around and walk around the tractor, yeah. can't we? Uh, Let's, uh, I'm going to spin the camera around and I'll just show you the tractor here. So because we're gonna be in the cab, so yeah, versatile 315, 315 horsepower tractor. And uh, here's the grain cart. So right hand unload, and it's the JM Patriotic Farmer Edition. And this is the model RX 1112. So really nice, uh, really nice setup here. Yeah. So, I'm going to say it now, that is one good looking tractor and grain cart. Okay, let's get in the tractor and let's get started. Yeah, it's you. What's that? I said I'm showing you, but... Okay. <laughs> Turn the radio. 
radio off and um, I uh, get the air conditioner fired up here. It's 81 degrees. Today is um, today October 14th. Yeah. So, okay, so four months till Valentine's Day. It's October 14th. It's 81 degrees here in Ohio, so quite warm. It's supposed to cool down a little bit this weekend, but we got to get this air conditioner fired up. Two of us in here, so uh, let's go with there. Make sure I got my radio on so I can communicate with everybody. And I uh, I just switched this around here, so I got a tablet in. I don't know what I do. Ah, I need to switch this over. I had the tablet on the other grain cart, and uh, the JNMI Farm app allows us to use the scales on the thing through an app here. So let's uh, let's see here. Okay, yep. All right, so I got my scales here on the tablet with the JNMI farm talking to the grain cart. And that's really nice. I like that. You can, uh, you know, see your weight of the cart because it's hard to look back there and see when that cart's full. And I have a pretty good idea here, but we can break this down field, truck, uh, bins, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of nice features on here. So we're going to take off in the Versatile here. And uh, this, again, this is the Versatile 315. Uh, from WMS Ohio, a dealer in Upper Sandusky, and um, 315 horsepower, 9 liter Cummins engine, 16 speed power shift transmission. This tractor has the standard hydraulics uh, at 55 gallons per minute total with four remotes. So plenty for what we're doing here today. Largest cab in the industry, too. Okay, let's get after the combine. And if you guys got questions uh, once we get going here, uh, we'll try to reply the best we can. Alexandria is going to read them to me, and uh, I'll be with you. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. And if we missed your question, uh, feel free to uh, yes, ask, ask again. again. And if, if seriously, guys, We've had some bad incidents on these live streams. If you put anything bad on here, inappropriate, we're gonna run you off. I mean, I'm not gonna answer it. We're not gonna put up with that. A lot of kids watch my YouTube video. Let's let's keep it clean. I don't know why there's always gotta be a few, but let's uh, let's do our best here. So we're going down an old railroad track here, and uh, uh, this field drive here is an old railroad track, and it's a it's a little rough here, but. The, the fields are a little soft in places, so we can't really get the trucks out here. So, looks like they got the combine there, and uh, we're going to head to it. And, uh, yeah, so. And then there's the other tractor grain cart coming up over here. So. And we'll have that later in the video. Alexandria will ride in that tractor, and uh, that's probably when I'll be running the combine. So. Okay, so they got the death fluid in the combine. Well, here we go. So someone's first question is, why do farmers harvest corn early sometimes? Well, I mean, it depends. You want to beat the weather because you don't know how the fall is going to go. Uh, we like to let the corn get down to that 25%. You still have to dry it down, but you got to get started because, you know, you risk wind damage weather and stuff like that. So we're pulling up under the combine now, and uh, here we go. Whoops, his, uh, his, <laughs> already had a mishap, guys. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Hopefully it don't happen when I'm running the combine. I'm sure he did that on purpose for the camera. <laughs> That's the owner, uh, one of the owners of the farm I help on. Uh, that's Jeff over there in the combine. Uh, that's a new S780 combine, and he just bought that this year. So, uh, pretty nice combine. I've got to run it a little bit, and uh, yep.
got some moisture on the corn over there. Okay, 15.9, great. We can really get some stuff done now. If you got questions, you can ask now, too. Yeah, there was really not. Oh, um, where are we harvesting in Dark County? We are about five miles west of Arcanum, and uh, if you look over that way, uh, that next road is uh, U.S. Route 127 and Hollinsburg or Canham Road uh, right behind us. So uh, there's a grain elevator over there. She could flip the camera over there. And that used to be uh, Continental Grain. And I think Cargill owned it at one time. So that's a good landmark if you're from the area to know where we're at. Um, how much in tons do you put in the grain cart? Um, when I get this grain cart full of corn, I got around 70,000 pounds, so I guess that'd be 35 ton. Uh, what size head is on the corn? Uh, it's an eight row head. It's a John Deere. Uh, it's, it's an eight row. Let me see. The I'll get you the model number here in a second. It's a 708C. That that head was new last year, and uh, when he got the new combine this year, he did upgrade from a 40-foot flex draper to the 45-foot head. I uh, haven't not not went to a bigger corn head yet. Uh, we plant with a 16-row planter, so just running an eight-row head's pretty nice. And uh, an eight-row head we can kind of take down the road here too. So I guess the next thing, maybe next year I'll have a 16 row head, who knows. Uh, someone said the weather by me is supposed to have a cold front coming through and they were promised to ride in the combine but they're worried they're not gonna get in. Do you think they'll still have some time? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. It's supposed to. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but uh, we should. I don't know how much. We should be back in the field Saturday, and we've missed the last couple rains. So. Uh, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what's the What's it yielding right now? Some people missed. Um, I don't know about this field. The last field we was just in was was over 300 bushel. It was phenomenal. Just phenomenal. When I get into combine, uh, in a little bit, we'll be able to look at the yield monitor and see. But uh, we've had some good corn. This was one of the first fields planted. I know this field's had, you know, snow and frost early on, but it all did come out of it. So, yep. Someone asked if you'll be working till the night. Yeah, we are. I don't know if I'm going to go the live stream. We will take the live stream up till dark because it's uh, uh, it'll probably get dark here around 7:30. And uh, it's been cloudy all day, but you can see the sun breaking through. Maybe we'll get a beautiful sky tonight. And if you guys want to just comment where you're from, where everybody's watching from, uh, I will go back later and watch this and read the comments. We don't get them all, so. I always like that, know where everybody's from, because it amazes me how people from all over the world uh, tune in to watch this stuff. Someone from France is in. Ah, nice. What time is it in France? I'm guessing six or seven hours ahead of us right now. Someone said they love your corn silage videos. Thanks. I have a lot more corn silage videos to edit that I shot this fall, but corn silage season's been over with. But don't worry, I'll have corn silage videos uh, for the next several months once I get editing. Uh, so it's midnight in France. Okay. Uh, do you know Chris Schmidtmeyer? Uh, yes, I do. His actually. son is on. Okay. Is that the 
Did I meet him? Uh, I met his one son when we were doing that corn silage video. I think his name was Jace. Oh, I probably shouldn't say that. Jared Schmidt-Myers. Jared Schmidt-Myers. Okay. Okay. Well, that's who's watching me. Okay, that's gotcha. Him. How is the tractor going with the car? Is it smooth and powerful? Yeah, I mean, horsepower-wise, this is more tractor than you need, probably, but... When you got that much weight, you want a big tractor up front just to hold you. And you know, if it gets wet or something, you won't. You really want all this. So, yeah, I'd rather have more horsepower than than uh, not enough. So we got we got twenty one thousand uh, nine hundred pounds in the in the cart right now. So he'll probably be able to dump on me two more times. And thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. I, these live streams are a lot of fun. They're just a little difficult to do, but I got a great helper here. So let's give a, a shout out. Thank you to Alex. Uh, someone asked when this crop was planted. Um, I think April 6th is the first day they planted corn. And I'm guessing this was planted April 7th or 8th, somewhere in there. Someone asked how you're liking the right side auger. I, I really like it. Um, it's uh, nice having your tractor controls here and the auger over there. Uh, now, the first day I ran it, I did pull up to the semi the wrong way twice. So I think I'm over that now, but who knows? I might screw up tonight now that I'm on, on camera. You never know. Yeah, we got the sun poking through now, so. And look at that, look at that tractor and green cart over there. That'll be on the video later on. Give you a view behind the combine here. Um, what is your favorite tractor transmission? Power shift, manual? I, I can run them all, but I'll tell you, uh, uh, that's a that's a tough question, but anybody that's run a tractor with a CVT or IVT, I mean, that is uh, something else. But I mean, a power shift's nice, but you know, I grew up running standard, so I mean, I can run anything, but uh, uh, I mean, they're all good, but... No, uh, we're going to be going in the winter here. Now, there's some guys that do cover crops around here. Uh, cover crops are coming on, but most likely, this field will be soybeans next year, and just depending, uh, this will probably just set like this all winter, and uh, we'll just no-till soybeans right into the corn stalks next spring. That's pretty typical for this area. Um, we do have a versatile Fury high-speed disc, and we're running that. We're trying to run that. I've been working some ground with it, and uh, I've run it over some corn stalks. Does a real nice job, but it does a better job if you let these weather a little bit. So uh, maybe in a couple weeks, here we get done with harvest, if, if the weather's good, we might work some of this and then plant soybeans right into that. All right, here we go. Some more unloading on the go action. For you. How fast is the combine running? Do you we are running five point one mile an hour. That is true radar speed. We normally shell corn around 15 mile an hour, but uh, we're slow.
Open it up here for the live stream. You know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> With that eight row head on that combine, I mean, it's easy to do. <laughs> what is your second favorite tractor? <laughs> well, I mean, versatile, obviously. Uh, I like white, I like Fords. I mean, I like them all. I just like them all. I'll stop here and we'll watch the combine go by. Look at that. I'll just sit here until he goes by here and then I'll get turned around. Good to talk to the grain cart operator. <laughs> okay, hey, somebody wants to know the capacity of the combine, and I figure you got the guy in there that knows the grain bin and the horsepower. About 450 bushels. Uh, horsepower somewhere over 500, I'm not sure exactly. Okay. <laughs> so the grain bin capacity that's around 450 and over 500 horsepower. Um, do you prefer a John Deere or Case IH? Which combine? Um, I mean, I know both companies make a great combine, but I. Uh, I know I'd never get these guys to buy one, but I, I like leaner combines and uh, Lexions. Uh, hell, I like them all. I just like them all. But I, I don't know. I, I know people that have all the brands and, and everybody, you know, likes them. So apparently these guys had bad luck with a cleaner years ago, like an R52 or something, and, uh, and switched. I, I don't know, I wasn't helping them then. Maybe if I would have been around, they wouldn't have had the trouble. I mean, you just don't know. Uh, how many bushels does the JNM grain cart? 1,112, roughly. How many hours is on the tractor in this one? 83.90. Does Versatile make a combine? Uh, versatile, not personally, or they don't make their own combine, but one of the owners of Versatile is a company named Roscoe Mash who makes combines overseas, and there were some of those shipped over here and branded Versatile, and uh, most of those were sold in Western Canada, Montana, and so forth, but Versatile does not offer them right now. I ran one of the later ones, the RT520 uh, with a 12 row head, and I really liked it. Do 
Do you run anything with tracks on it? On this one? No. Just my snowmobiles. Air conditioners making it pretty chill in here. How many acres do you farm? Um, a lot, a lot. <laughs> I'm not. I can't say. Why do combines only unload on the left side? That's just the way they were made. I, I kind of wonder with uh, the grain cart having a right hand unload if they won't put that on a combine someday. Or somebody will come up with a deal with an auger in the middle so you can swing, swing both ways I guess you could say. Hmm. Kind of like a forage harvester. How many versatile tractors do you own? Um, I have a bunch of 164th and a bunch of 132nd and a couple 116ths. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I think they're watching the live stream in the but I don't know that. Might be watching football or something too. How many combines do you run? Uh, this farm has two combines, one red and one green. But the other combine is uh, probably running about 15 miles away. Can you compare the Versatile 315 to other tractors of the same horsepower? Um, I mean, as far as specs. Uh, or maybe even just like, do you prefer it over other 315s? Or yeah, I, I've, never, advantages I've to never, it? never really run any um, other brand of tractors this size to personally compare it to. Is Versatile um, having any plans to get a tractor with a higher horsepower than the 610? Well, the, the Model 620, the Model 620 is available uh, for 2022. So they do it. They did have a little horsepower increase on all models. Um, I got a full grain cart. Okay, I'm gonna head back and uh, fill a truck and try to get back here on time. With my with my job and stuff it'd be hard for me to have livestock but when I was a kid I mean I wanted to be a dairy farmer that's all I talked about but uh, I don't know if I want to be a dairy farmer now but I I'd love to raise some beef cattle for sure do you ever go to the races at Eldora <laughs> I've never been to Eldora and uh, I know that just people find that crazy to live here and have the Eldora dirt track just probably 20 minutes from here and I've never been there. Someday maybe. What will this corn be used for? Uh, probably ethanol. There's an ethanol plant in Greenville just really about eight miles up the road from here. But this will be stored in bins here on the farm 
and uh, hold to the ethanol plant throughout the winter. So we're gonna head back. Oh, we gotta go down them railroad tracks to the semi, and I should have enough to fill a truck here. Uh, do you prefer running the combine or the grain cart? Um, I really like running both, but I, I think probably the grain cart, especially in corn, because you do keep moving. Soybeans, it can get a little boring unless you had two combines in the same field, then it might be more entertaining. So. Will the John Deere strike affect you if it continues? Um, not me personally, but uh, speaking of the John Deere strike, <laughs> I guess I heard they just went on strike yesterday, I think. So I, I don't know enough about it to comment. And, uh, so I'm not going to comment. I mean, I know it happens. It's part of the deal, I guess. Uh, someone said, stupid question, but what's ethanol? Ethanol will be uh, where the corn is made into like an alcohol uh, fuel, like gasoline or blended with gas. Some of it's blended with gasoline or, or actually just uh, almost like a gas itself. Almost kind of moonshine too, really. But then they can take the, uh, I guess, the corn gluten after they get the ethanol or the alcohol out of it, the sugars out of it, and then that can be used for livestock feed. So, so I mean, it's it's uh, not as wasteful as people think. So we're gonna pull up to the semi here, and uh, I'm gonna fold the auger out here. Two semis are here. Hank is the Hank is the the truck driver here at the farm. Uh, Hank does a little bit of everything, but he's a truck driving son of a gun. If you look truck driver up on Google, you'd see this guy right here. I, I guarantee you that. So we're gonna fold this auger out here and uh, I'll bet Hank's even watching the live stream there in the, in the semi. I don't know that for sure, but so we'll pull up here and fill this truck. He's had a good break here. He's been running this. He's been running like a madman today, and uh, uh, he's watching <laughs> he's the live watching. stream. So this this has got a little bit of corn in it already. So uh, I'm just going to finish it off here. So um, I'll have to be careful here. I don't spill any corn. So. I'm on camera, so I'm going to be a little, a little more cautious. So we'll kick the old PTO in. Open up the gate. So, so what I like here is right out the back window here. I got my controls here, and uh, I can see the spout right there. This is pretty nice. So if you want, I'm not a big. I don't swivel my seat like a lot of guys do, but. If you want to swivel your seat, you know, I mean, here you go. I'm kind of, I always keep the seat straight. That's just me. I'm... This thing can unload some corn too. So I'm, uh, since I'm talking and stuff, I'm going to just be a little cautious here, not open it all the way. I just put 17,000 pounds of corn on him, and uh, there's Hank, there's uh, there's the old grain hauler Hank, he's going to tarp it, and I was watching him, and now I didn't back up straight, so I'm going to have to correct myself here, so, you know, it's just part of it when you're on camera.
I kind of like it when when the truck's completely empty because this cart will just fill a semi and uh, works out pretty nice. So we'll have to come back and uh, I might just get a, a dump off the combine and come back here and just finish this truck off then. So I always uh, shut my gate, I let the PTO run a little bit, speed it up. Kick the PTO off, and then I drive, I'll drive away from the truck for a little bit. And then any grain that's in the auger kind of slides down. Then when I fold the auger back, you really don't lose, lose any to speak of. Better get back out there. If you ask the question, just ask it again because it yeah, kind of got we, lost. Yeah, we can ask questions, so feel free to ask away. Um, I'll go out and get one more dump from the combine, and then I can I can top the truck off, and then I'll head back, and then we'll switch, and I'll jump into combine for a little bit if they're okay with it out there. Uh, what kind of transmission? Transmission is in the tractor. This tractor has a 16-speed power shift. Uh, why dump trailers over hopper? Um, this farm do does have a hopper bottom as well. Uh, if you see the bin site, um, we have to back in and dump, and then they, these guys uh, haul some chicken manure and uh, go down to the ethanol plant and get some gluten and stuff. A dump trailer just works good here. You can haul gravel too, but there there is one on the farm. The other guys are using that right now. So, Jeff's dad and uncle are using that. Someone said, uh, "Oh, my son went to Glacier National Park this summer. He said it was the most beautiful place ever." Does your daughter agree? <laughs> yes, I agree. It's yeah. my favorite place on earth, and he loves it too. Yep. Yeah. Because she worked out there this summer, um, I was out there once a month. Yeah, once a like, month. I was out there four times, and then and my wife was out there. She couldn't go out every time, but she was out there twice. So um, we had a lot of fun. We've been there two other times before. Alexandria was just a. I mean, I think she was a year and a half the first time we were there, so she don't remember that. And then we were back. What four? Or five years ago yeah and she always said she liked it and then she 
end up getting a job there. So the combine's waiting on us, so I got to get my stuff together here. Are J&M grain carts still made in Fort Recovery? They are. Yep. How do you, oh, go ahead. The J&M guys were out the other day and did some video and stuff, so, yep. Um, have you ever traveled overseas for work? I have. I've been to uh, Europe a couple times in the UK. I had a visa to go to Russia twice and then I ended up never going. And then now uh, I have not been out of the country since this whole uh, scandemic happened. bit of nights okay but if I'm gonna do night stuff like working ground and stuff I like to do it really early in the morning but uh, yeah I get I start getting tired around nine o'clock I'm usually in bed by 10 so but we might end up working late tonight so okay the combines full so let's get under them and get some corn here take this uh, what you give me here should fill the semi and then I'll come back and then if you want to switch out we can do that Trevor wants to know when the versatile is leaving because he wants to ride it um, I don't know it, it just depends <laughs> ask him why he's not here now <laughs> now nah, we'll get him in it Where's your favorite place to ride snowmobiles? Um, I, the West, definitely the Rockies. I've rode in Wyoming, Utah, and Idaho. And obviously Utah the most because my son Andrew lives out there. So I plan on doing several uh, Rocky Mountain snowmobile trips this winter. So It should be pretty exciting. Uh, of course, I got a new snowmobile last year, but uh, um, maybe I shouldn't. Eh, I don't think he cares, but uh, you might see a turbocharged sled, mountain sled this year in some of my videos. Won't be me, but good <laughs> chance you're going to see one. And it's a cat. Someone asked if I ride snowmobiles. I try. <laughs> When he lets me. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> she had a good year last year riding. Yeah, no, I got to ride in Wyoming last year, and it was cool. I took over his sled. If you guys remember the new one he got, I got to ride that one last year. It was cool. She actually rode my... I bought a, a brand-new Arctic Cat Riot last... Uh, I got it last November, and uh, I was out of town when we got the first snow, so she actually rode my snowmobile before I even got to. <laughs> But I, I trust her. He trusts me with his new razor too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she rode it over to the field tonight. So we're just a few miles from home. Um, what type of drone do you use? Um, I use, uh, I, I got five drones total. Two of them are, are wore out, but I've got some DJI Phantoms and then I got a Phantom 4 Pro. But right now I use a DJI Mavic uh, Pro and a Mavic Air pretty much for everything. Hey, there's three deer over here in the field. I don't know, you can see them over there. They're like um, right yeah, ahead yeah. if I could Looks like a, a doe right and two yearlings there. over there. Yeah. Yeah, so. They blend in. Anyways, that's the first deer I've actually seen since harvest has started, but they're going into corn, so maybe we'll chase them out later. Okay, we're gonna go up on the railroad tracks again now. Um, someone asked why can't the combine unload on the trailer? Well, because then it'd have to stop. Yeah. Yeah. The reason we use the grain cart is we can't get the trucks in the field. That way with the grain cart, the combine never has to stop 
um, I can go up there, get a load, and haul it back to the trucks, and it just keeps the combine moving. If you had to stop and unload in the trailer, then the combine's not doing what it's supposed to. So a grain cart really speeds up the operation. I, I know I've been over to Europe and stuff when they're harvesting, and they actually use dump trailers on their tractors and unload in the field right into the dump trailer and the tractor and that. But um, it's, it's just different here in the U.S. because the trucks are often traveling, you know, far away to the bin site or whatever. Do you have any plans on hunting this season? Um, I might deer hunt, I and I might coyote trap. It just just depends how things work out. I haven't found any signs of beaver in any of the drainage ditches. I would I'd love to trap some beaver this winter, but I don't know that we have any around here. I mean, I know they're around, but I don't think where I can. None of the ditches here on the on the farm, as far as I know. Okay, we're gonna head out and then I'll jump in the combine before it gets dark here. So you can see uh, the sun's went down, so. Um, someone asked if you grew up on a farm and how did you get into um, machinery sales? Yes, I, I did grow up on a farm and uh, in Northeast Ohio, my family still farms over there. I went to school for egg mechanics, worked for a farm equipment dealer, and uh, helped out farming a little bit too. And then I got a job with Gail as a service rep, and I had to move to Western Ohio. And then I started helping some neighboring farms here. So I can't drive five hours back to help my family. So this works out pretty good. And uh, so I, yeah, between farm equipment farm and I've been around it my entire life. tractor that you've never gotten to drive that you want to drive? Um, <laughs> maybe think I'm, of an old I'm one. sure I'm sure there is but uh, <laughs> I'd like to get an old 1150 or 1156 versatile just to play around with but I, I have drove one before but not not a lot but I'll drive about anything that's out there if I get the opportunity, so. Someone asked if they can get your hat anywhere. Um, we gave these away at the Farm Progress show, and uh, uh, there was limited, I, no, not really, there's nothing left. I, I, need, I, I did a thing where I was selling t-shirts and sweatshirts, 
and I was going to do hats, but seriously, for as many people that asked for merchandise, the sales were very poor, and um, I'm just afraid to venture into it. It's uh, It takes a lot of time. I don't have to print the stuff off personally and, and ship it, but it takes a lot of time, and I don't have a lot of time. And with the sales I had on t-shirts and stuff, I just... I don't know, maybe maybe a, another time. Maybe this winter I'll look into it a little more when I'm not so busy. So he's got the lights on on the combine, so I might as well flip the tractor on here. stop down here at the end then we'll switch around yeah is Jordan gonna jump in the other tractor then yeah should I just shut this down or I'll just leave her run semi's full so um, I guess we can top this off and then get the other tractor or whatever I don't care. I just tell you with that and then Jordan can get in the other and after we get that one full. Yep. Sounds good. I'll just leave this radio in here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna get out of the Versatile and jump into Combine and uh, I'll show you some different stuff here. Watch your foot, Alex. I'm gonna get a drink of water here real quick. All right, let's take a look at the tractor here with the lights on. Anything I need to know? <laughs> Just run it. Run her like hell. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, What's that? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> If you want to just finish filling that, we can.
Okay, so we got this going on. We got that going on. We got the control handle here. And uh, we'll get started in the combine. So, I'll kick in. Uh, let's get this seat. I guess it's back all the way. I wish this seat went back a little farther, but hey. Okay. Kick the separator on. Header on. Hit the rabbit button for full speed ahead. Let the dust clear out of the feeder house here. When you fire this thing up, you get that big dust cloud. So. Spin around here. Then I hit the number two button. That puts the header height control in. Come in a little crooked here. Once I get straight, I hit the auto track button and I'm good to go. So now, since I got the header height control and the auto track, I can just set the joystick and I can fly my drone now. So that works out pretty good. A little warm in here. What's your position at Versatile? Um, I am uh, I'm in dealer development for new dealers, so I do training for new dealers on product, uh, parts ordering, um, you know, all the paperwork stuff, that kind of stuff. So I, I was in service for them. I was a service rep for him for a long time, and then I, I took this position in dealer development. There's no more questions. Okay, wow. There's a lot of people watching, though. Okay. You guys can bring on the questions. You can questions ask about or, anything yeah. or whatever. Uh, we can talk, you know, we can talk farming, uh, farm equipment, snowmobiling, trapping, um, are, Whatever. are those 30 inch rows? Yes, these are 30 inch rows. I think normally, um, I think we plan around 34,000 uh, population. That's 34,000 plants per acre, roughly. And this, this is all non-irrigated here. Um, with my job, I get to travel all over the country. And uh, I, I know we talk about different farming practices and stuff, and, and I love it. And uh, I know when I get out west, you know, they, they grow some dry land corn out there and uh, a lot less population of plants per acre. And then I talk about our field tile, how we have drainage tile in our fields to get rid of water. Well, out there, they're doing everything they can to conserve water. So, I mean, I, that's one of my things I really like about my job is I get to travel all over the country and, and talk to so many farmers and learn so many different farming practices, how everything's done. And, and the, the guys out in different areas like to hear how we do it here too. And that's really, you know, one of the reasons or things behind my YouTube channel is I get to go so many places and see so many different things. And, and I think that's what makes my YouTube channel unique is I, I got such a good mix of everything. And uh, it's almost turning into a full-time job and I really don't have time. But uh, I have a lot of videos coming when I get time to edit. This is just a busy time of the year for me to edit, but I got lots of footage, so this winter should be good. What's your favorite uh, farm show to attend? Um, I mean, for, a, for an indoor show, the National Farm Machinery Show in, in Louis, Louisville, Kentucky is always a good one. Um, outside shows, I've been to a lot of them. Obviously, Farm Progress Show that bounces back and forth between Iowa and uh, Illinois every other year is a, is a nice show. It's a big show, but um, the Husker Harvest Show, I went up there one time. That was pretty neat because that's an irrigated show and a lot of cattle stuff. I did like that. And um, the Ohio Show is, is a nice show because I'm from Ohio. 
And of course, a lot of these farm shows are not as big as they used to be, so kind of sad, but it's just the way it's going. What is the yield since you're in the call? Uh, this is saying uh, dry yield of 212. The moisture is 17.2. Someone asked if you'll ever go to Big Iron in Fargo. Uh, yeah, I could have went this year if I wanted to. I didn't really have time because I had something else I had to do. Um, Maybe one of these days I, I will, for sure. And I, I was asked to go to the Pennsylvania show this summer, and it just didn't work out. I was out west. Uh, New York has a summer show the week before Pennsylvania. I mean, there's farm shows about everywhere, outdoor and indoor, but uh, there's just so many, it's hard to go to all of them. Grain bin is three quarters full. And the tractor and grain cart's waiting up here. So we'll top that off and you're gonna look at the versatile from the combine. And then once they get that full, they'll uh, jump into 8R and the other grain cart. We'll get a look at that. And then Alex will jump in that tractor for a little bit and see if you got any questions there. In corn, people ask about the test weight, and we get a pretty good test weight here in Ohio. Uh, we can get up, you know, high 50s, 60. Other areas, when you get farther up north, don't get that test weight. But I think you're paid a premium on your corn with the test weight, so we can get a pretty decent test test weight here. Okay, so we are dumping into the grain cart. And I'm gonna say it again, that's a good looking tractor and grain cart. A single single auger? Yes. Both of the grain carts that you have um, unload on the right side? Uh, no, one's the left hand. We've had this is the third year for the other cart. So we just about got the cart full. Um, just stay with me to the end. I might be able to just about fill you. There's a little room on the back there.
You're not clear full, but you're pretty full. I started my YouTube channel in 2012. Never imagined it would turn into what it did. That I guess that wasn't my goal. I just threw up a couple, just started throwing up tractor clips, different tractors, combines, implements, and so forth, and it they really took off. And I'm just coming up on 100,000 subscribers, so that's that's pretty awesome. Um, there's a lot of farming channels out there for sure. And some have done really good and passed me up, but that's okay. I, I feel my channel's a little unique and different than, than most of the others. How many videos have you shot? Um, I have, uh, I think I have like 1,200 videos on my YouTube channel. I mean, I have quite a few. Now, some of my early videos that I started were you know, just 30, 40 seconds, a minute, and so forth. But, you know, probably the last four or five years, uh, they've been quite long. I got videos over an hour long, you know, anywhere from 10 minutes to 40 minutes, especially the silage videos or my custom wheat harvest videos, because there's so many different machines running together. So they turn into a pretty long video. Does the fame ever go to your head? No, I... I, I laugh when people say I'm famous because I don't I don't look at it that way. Now my kids love to tease me if I get mad about something. They're the first ones to say, "Oh, the fame's going to dad's head." But but now I don't look at it like that. I don't think I'm famous, but apparently people do, and that and that's great. But uh, I know a few years ago somebody asked for my autograph, and I I laughed because I was like, "Really?" Like I thought it was a joke, but. I've actually signed quite a few autographs. I think someone did ask how to get your autograph earlier. Okay. I, um, how long have you been with Versatile? Uh, 12 years. It's been 12 years. Yeah. Um, I worked for Gale for just shy of 15 years, and then I went to work for, I left them to go work for Versatile. Ten four. That truck's full. I didn't tarp it because I was under the gun. Someone said the only autograph I want is on my paycheck. <laughs> yeah. How come you don't have a versatile combine? Uh, versatile doesn't offer. Versatile no longer offers a combine. Most of the versatile combines that were were uh, sold sold out in Western uh, Canada and Montana and so forth. So this corn's a little dirty. Uh, this corn's a little more beat up with the leaves and so forth than some of the other stuff. It's not bad. I mean, it's all standing, but the tops are starting to break off in places. But a lot more dirt's coming out of the, the feeder house here uh, than I've seen yet this year.
one thing I've noticed this year too in some of the other fields, the corn is yielding good, but the kernel depth, like size of the kernels, has just been something else. I thought the seed corn salesman was here today, and I told him that, and we talked about different things, but uh, all the corns had, had fungicide sprayed on it, uh, you know, after it was up and stuff, and he thinks that really made the difference in health. They've been doing it here for several years, so we got the other tractor now be coming up beside us here with the other grain cart, so um, got something different here, and uh, we'll show you that. And then once we show you that, I don't know how long to go on these live streams. We've been going a little over an hour. Um, we'll go a little bit longer, probably 15, 20 minutes. So if you're just joining in, hi. Um, this video will be available to watch here uh, once I get home tonight and we get it, get everything uh, set up. And uh, But we'll probably go another 20 minutes. So if you've got any questions, now's your time. Is that 8R a demo? Uh, yes, uh, the John Deere dealer in Coldwater, uh, Ken Felt Equipment, brought it down for us to demo. And actually, their salesman, Jordan, is running it right now. So. How do you like your new snowmobile? Um, I like it a lot. I did a, I did a couple videos on it last year. So Ohio are we farming here? We're in uh, Dark County, Ohio. The closest town to us right now is Arcanum, Ohio. It's about five miles away from us right now. Kind of got a nice background there with the sky and stuff as we're doing this. Do you think grain pricing will stay high in the next couple years? I, I really don't know. It's, it's, you never know. It's, it's hard to tell. As long as there's demand, which I wouldn't know why there wouldn't be. I just got a warning for low diesel exhaust fluid, but he just put some in. Hey guys, um, this live stream's been going over an hour, so Alexandria is going to jump in the uh, 8R tractor with uh, Jordan, who works for Kenfeld Equipment. And if you got any questions on that tractor, he's going to be the guy to answer it. So I'm going to step out of the combine, give her the camera. So we'll do that. Uh, she'll ride around with him, jump back in the combine, and that'll probably do it. All right, I'll take you over. Okay. They're bright. You 
got it. Thanks. You want me to hand that to you? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to hand the camera off here. Okay, if you want to introduce yourself, you can. I'm Jordan Collins with uh, Kenfeld Group. I work out of the Coldwater store. So if you guys have any questions for him, um, I'll ask him. So just about the tractor or anything really John Deere related. Um, yeah. Just Bring fire, it on. Fire away. <laughs> I was messing with these lights. I wasn't sure if I was oh. shining them ready at you guys. Oh no, it was good. <laughs> it's all good. Hey Jeff, you got a coffee? Uh, what model is the tractor? It is a 8R340. It's not a lot of questions. Does IVT mean anything to you? Does that okay, they just said IVT question mark? Yeah. Yes, it's an IVT. Everyone's just giving you crap for John Deere, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> you guys can ask any questions you want. <laughs> yeah, this tractor actually has the 30 mile an hour uh, IVT transmission, so don't see a lot of that in the states uh, it's more of a european thing but we're doing more and more of that and selling the faster transmission it makes it nicer for transportation uh how much horsepower for the green cart uh you can run the cart comfortably the other 8r tractor that's here is a 235 horse this is a 340 uh, 340 horse but Anything north of 200 usually handles these grain carts well, as long as you got a heavy enough draw bar. Uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but uh, what do you think about the John Deere union members being on strike? That's, I don't know if you can answer that. That's, but. <laughs> uh, that's interesting right now. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, hopefully, this gets resolved quickly. I don't know a lot of details or, or very little details about it, but uh, hopefully, with the amount of business that's happening and uh, the way that the markets are right now, hopefully, they can get that sorted out sooner rather than later. Letting questions come in. Can I ask you something? How long have you been with John Deere? Uh, I've been in the John Deere business almost 12 years now. Okay. Um, I have a lot of people like these questions. How did you get into looking for them? Did you have a background in farming? Uh, I actually did not have an agricultural background uh, in farming. It was just started out as kind of a job while I was going to college something to do and I was going to college part-time and just kind of fell in love with agriculture and uh, fell in love with helping the customers and being around the equipment. It's a lot of fun. So. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Does John Deere have a lot of overseas sales? Yes. Yeah. John Deere's a worldwide company. Factories all over the all over the world. Stuff. Some of the stuff that we sell here in the states comes from overseas. Some of the tractors do. A lot of big tractors and combines that we sell here are are built in the U.S. But some of our mid-sized tractors and stuff come from outside the country. Okay. Um, 
do you think tracks are better than tires or does it depend on what like what tractor it's on yeah that's that's a great debate that's been going on definitely in the this part of the world selling more and more track tractors and there's even some track combines here and there so uh, it just depends on on the operation um, a little bit smoother ride in the field it, it just all varies I, I do like tracks a lot but uh, okay. depends on the operation <laughs> flipping around and you can see farmhand mic coming down barely I'll be in here for until he gets to the end so if you guys have any questions just bring them on now about hey, Jeff, the tractor Does the tractor you're driving have ILS suspension? Yes, it does. We have front wheels and ILS. What's your favorite John Deere tractor? <laughs> My favorite John Deere tractor is a 9570RX. Uh, big four wheel drive. Tillage tractor. I just love that tractor. <laughs> What's your favorite combine? Favorite combine? Um, it doesn't have to be John Deere, it can be anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have to say. Yeah, I guess it doesn't have to be a John Deere. Um, boy, these new S780s, any of the new S700 combines have been have been really amazing. Uh, 780 or 770 is probably my favorite combine. Mm -hmm. uh, does it come with leather seats or is that an option? The tractor? Or the yeah, the tractor. tractor yeah. Yeah. So this tractor here is the, the new John Deere Signature Edition. So that comes with the with the leather. It actually has massaging, heated and cooled seats in it. Uh, part of the Signature Edition. So yeah, that's really nice. Um, why does the combine have yellow... Or why does the combine not have flashing yellow LED lights? Do you know why? It, it does. It does? Okay, yeah. maybe you just can't... You probably just can't see it in the video. It's kind of hard to pick up on camera. Yep. Um, and then one last question. What year is this tractor? The tractor is a, a 21, 2021. Okay. And then how, what year is the combine? The combine's know? a 2020. Okay. All right. Well, um, that was my ride with Jordan. Okay. And so uh, thank you for everything. Yeah. And Thanks for hanging out. Yep. <laughs> we'll see you. All right. <laughs> How do you get I got it? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right, so I'm going back to my dad. So well, the combine's beeping at him right now because the separator is still turning. Oh. <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Wrap this up on this round. Then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're gonna jump back in the combine. 
and then we got some end rows we got to knock out and then we'll probably wrap this up but we'll talk about 10 more minutes or so you go ahead Probably wrap this up on this round because uh, we got some end rows to do and stuff. We've been going about an hour and a half, so yeah. So if you guys have any last minute questions you want to get in, bring them on. <laughs> This year it's been when the drying bin gets full and we the corn's dry so it's going through the dryer and to the other bins really fast so we've we've done a lot today we had to finish a field we didn't get a real early start because it drizzled a little bit last night and i uh, had to move some stuff around but um it just depends i mean we don't work real late here uh you know anywhere from eight to ten uh, ten o'clock is usually as late we go. Are you planning on any um, Michigan snowmobile trips this year? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably do one for sure in the uh, in the upper UP, as they call it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. What's your favorite old time tractor? Um, a lot of the older white tractors and uh, the versatile 1150 is a cool one. We took it to the dark. It's not pitch dark yet, but it will be soon. So yeah, the sky looks pretty over yeah, there. Yeah, it's pretty sky. So th was there a lot of questions asked about that tractor? Uh, there wasn't a lot. Yeah. I kind of came up with some questions for them. Uh, right. But yep. They were just basically giving them crap for being a John Deere rep. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. But it's good. I mean, this is a. This was a cool live stream, uh, you know, three different tractors, uh, three different machines running in the field, and I was in the seat of two of them, so, yep. Uh, do you have any plans to go to Pennsylvania soon? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I, I will probably be there in the next couple of weeks, I would say. So, I mean, here we are. It's mid-October already this year, so flying by, and before you know it, um, and a harvest will be over with and be like, where did uh, 2021 go? It'll be Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. -er. If you think about it, I mean, just about a month and uh, I start putting on my Christmas stuff Thanksgiving weekend. I mean, so month or, yeah, like days. five, yeah, like it's month. coming. Yeah, five weeks. It's crazy. But before I go, since it's winding down, I, I just want to say this YouTube thing's been awesome. All my uh, followers, subscribers and stuff, meeting all you guys at farm shows. I mean, that's what makes it fun when all this interaction and all the people I've met and getting to talk to all, all these different farmers and people about farming and stuff. Uh, I never had any idea it would turn into this. And it's just a, it's just a great experience. And, uh, I just want to thank everybody. We're, we're going to hit 100,000 subscribers here real soon. And, I mean, I just think that's pretty cool. Who would have ever thought? So thank you, everybody, for that. And uh, we'll be there soon. I'll have to try to think of some kind of special video for 100,000 subscribers, maybe. I don't know. It should be happening right here in the next couple weeks, if I had to guess. If you're watching this, 
you're not following him and watching this video, it means please go do it. <laughs> yeah. And I think I got like, I think I got like six videos now, over a million views, which is, I mean, that's that's crazy. That's a lot. I often wonder. I mean, there's so many YouTube channels out there and very successful YouTube channels, very popular. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a one-man show, but, I mean, there's people that put a lot more time and effort and acting and stuff in theirs. I just wonder how much YouTube now has taken over the TV market or the movie and stuff. I mean, it's had, it's had to have a huge impact on it because... You know, you can go to YouTube and find whatever you want. I mean, you're so limited with movies and TV shows, but I've never is YouTube channels on about everything you can think of. Uh, I mean, you know, for outdoor stuff, farming, hunting, trapping, uh, cars, trucks, uh, just everything, just great entertainment. So this is just, uh, just a great thing, in my opinion. Well, guys, a couple more questions, and I think we are going to wrap it up before. I don't really want to be doing this when I'm opening up end rows and stuff down here at this corner. Just too much going on, and it's dark, so I need. I really need to pay attention. So, if you got a couple more questions, okay. Um, can you do a video from the factory? Do you think making a tractor? Uh, yes, that is in the works someday. That is in the works, and it was in the works, and. Also, uh, I had one planned with somebody else that builds engines that might be in versatile trackers, but then this whole uh, coronavirus thing happened and it put a halt on everything. So I hope we get back to normal one of these days and I can do that. So, yes. Um, it's just really a lot of people saying thank you for your content and okay. they love it and they're glad to watch you and all of that. Okay. So, so guys, um, Let's, let's wrap, guys and girls, kids, everybody. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. I'm going to say goodbye. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, big thanks to my daughter for helping me with this because I cannot. I better swing the auger out here. What the heck am I? Slacking. I'm going to have a full bend here. Uh, but uh, thank you. Thanks to Alex. And with that said, we are going to wrap this uh, live stream up. So, guys. Uh, you can go back and watch this video here probably either tonight, um, tomorrow or something. I got to go home and I think there's a couple things I got to do to make sure it's, it's viewable later on. And uh, if you watch it again, hit that like button. Feel free to comment and thank you everybody. And I don't know if I'll get another live stream off here for Harvest, but uh, thanks for tuning in. It, it's a lot of fun. So we're going to wrap her up. So.